Bill, isn't this a beautiful place? It's a beautiful, beautiful place. It really, really is. And you know, I finally realized why they call this Mile High Country. Why? Because it's a mile down there where we had to park to walk all the way up here to this place. <laughs> you know, I realized tonight in Colorado that I wasn't built for hiking, I was built for buffets. <laughs> <laughs> I was coming up the hill. There was an elderly man and woman about halfway up the hill, Bill, and they had stopped, and she, I heard her look up. She said, Earl, I've gone as far as I could go. What do you want me to do? And the man turned around and pitched her his keys. He said, go back to the car. I'll be back when the program's over. <laughs> she said, but Earl, we've been married 50 years. He said, honey, I'm halfway up this cliff. He said, you're on your own. That's what he told her. Then he went back and he brought her on up and we're glad we're here tonight. We are. You didn't get it, did you? No, Bill? I didn't. <laughs> you just pulled your car up there and parked it. I <laughs> just, just parked it and just come on up. And you know, I'm glad God loves big people. He loves us so good he put in his word, come now all that are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. God put that in there for people like me. <laughs> By the way, when Tony is not uh, doing this, he is a, he's an undertaker. Be the last man to let you down, yeah, Bill. If you do business with him, you'll go in the hole every time. When your day ends, Bill, mine just begins. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta tell you this story, Bill. Friend Tim and I, well, my wife, she's been with us three years, but Tim and I, we've how, had how, how do you pronounce her name? Her name is, Say it with me, Taranda. Taranda. Taranda, but I call her Daisy, Daisy. I always have. Because it's easy for you to remember and everybody else too. But the uh, man that uh, promoted Tim and I for 20 years uh, was a fine man. The Lord called him home about uh, six months ago. And uh, his family called and asked if we would come and sing for the, for the service. And there was no way our, our schedule wouldn't permit. But uh, we told them how much we loved them and appreciated them. And the, the next uh, morning, I picked up the phone and I called Cincinnati, Ohio to order flowers. And we had a bad static on the phone line. And I was talking to the lady there at the flower shop and she could just barely hear me. But I, I put, put in my order and I, I said, honey, I want a big spray of roses. I want you to send to the funeral home. And I said, I want you to put a big bow on the front of it. And I said, on that bow, I said, I, I want you to write, rest in peace. I said, honey, do that on both sides. And if you can squeeze it in, put, we shall meet in heaven someday. And, uh, and, and I said, did you understand what I said? And she said, well, it's staticky, but I believe I did. So uh, I said, okay, thank you. And I hung up the phone. I thought everything in the world was just fine and perfect till the next night at 9 o'clock when the family called me. And uh, Taranda come in where I was at, and she said, Tony, she said, Bob's on the phone, and he'd like to speak with him. That's, that's his son. And I went in, I said, Bob, I just want you to know I love you, and I'm so sorry about your daddy. And he said, well, Tony, I appreciate it, and you know how daddy loved you and Tim and, and Taranda. And I said, yes, but he said, Tony, there's one thing that I don't understand. And I said, well, what is that? And he said, Tony, there's a big spray of flowers at the front of my daddy's coffin, and on the front of it, it reads... Rest in peace on both sides. And if you squeeze in, we shall meet in heaven someday. 